Hi again, uh, we're on question number four now in the BY1 January 2009 paper. Uh, this question um, is relating to the uh, cell structure uh, part of your syllabus. Okay, uh, let's have a look at uh, what the examiner's got to say here. Um, he's saying the diagram shows the ultrastructure of a plant cell. Now, whenever you hear uh, or read the term ultrastructure, um, it's going to relate to um, e either a plant or an animal cell, um, doesn't matter, or even a prokaryotic cell for that matter. Uh, what it means is the, the image that you're going to be looking at um, is one from an electron microscope. Okay, It's a very, very detailed image of the uh, cell organelles. Now, you can only really see uh, the nucleus and uh, chloroplasts with a light microscope. Okay, All the other organelles, like uh, the Golgi bodies, rough endoplasmic reticula, mitochondria, can really only be seen with an electron microscope. Okay, So that's a little tip for you. So that, uh, that diagram there um, is, is a drawing taken from an electron microscope uh, image okay it's it's showing the ultrastructure because you've got um, uh, various organelles uh, being displayed okay so that's the ultrastructure there uh, the examiner has been kind he's told you it's a plant cell uh, in this instance uh, he, he may not do that in other questions he may decide to uh, uh, ask you what type of cell it is. So just to let you know, if it's got a chloroplast, that is a chloroplast there. It's got to be a plant cell. Okay. Right, let's uh, scroll down and uh, answer part A. Okay, so you're asked to complete the table by naming and stating the function of each of the organelles labelled A, B and C. Uh, so let's scroll up then. Um, I can tell you that uh, A, there is uh, a mitochondrion, okay, or mitochondria, yeah. Uh, B, as I've already mentioned a moment ago, is the chloroplast. And C, now the examiner has been pretty good with this one. His arrows are quite accurately drawn. They, they are pointing to little... Uh, spherical objects on the surface of another organelle. Okay, so I can tell you that that organelle as a whole uh, is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. I know it's the rough endoplasmic reticulum because on the surface, um, just as the examiner has uh, arrowed there, are the ribosomes. Okay, so the dark Spherical structures are ribosomes. They sit on the surface of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. Another way you can uh, determine that that's the rough endoplasmic reticulum is if I arrow to that point there, the rough endoplasmic reticulum is an extension of the nuclear envelope. Okay. So this is the nuclear envelope here. If I label that N. Okay. And the rough endoplasmic reticulum extends out from the nuclear envelope. Okay. Um, a little bit more information about the nuclear em nuclear envelope. It's uh, it's uh, double structured. Okay. So it's actually the outer part of the nuclear envelope. Um, if I just sort of highlight that this is the outer part there in uh, blue with a blue arrow of the nuclear envelope and it's that outer part that forms the uh, rough endoplasmic uh, reticulum okay uh, so that's a, a bit of extra information uh, for you but uh, the labeling c which is what the examiner wants is actually the ribosome okay right um, i'll just quickly type those answers in for you Okay, so um, the functions then of each of these organelles, okay, the uh, mitochondria, okay, um, that uh, is the organelle that uh, undertakes uh, respiration. Respiration, of course, is the um, set of reactions 
that produces ATP. All right. Now, a little tip for you here. OK, never state that the mitochondria produce energy. The examiner always wants to hear that it uh, produces ATP. Remember that ATP is the uh, molecule that our bodies and, and in fact all organisms on Earth use uh, for energy. OK, so function of the mitochondria is um, you can either say respiration or the examiner would allow uh, ATP uh, production. So let's type that in. OK, then the uh, function of the chloroplast um, is to carry out uh, photosynthesis. Um, the examiner would allow the answer that it traps uh, light. OK, um, I've seen some mark schemes where they would allow um, an answer of ATP production again. Now, it's it's only going to be in your your second year that you're going to know uh, the the detailed functions of the chloroplast, uh, but it does actually produce ATP uh, as well. Uh, but I think the safe option here uh, is to state that it uh, actually carries out photosynthesis. Okay. Lastly, then uh, the ribosome, uh, straightforward enough. This is the uh, the site of protein synthesis. OK, so um, that was, uh, I hope, an easy uh, six marks there, uh, just typing in those um, uh, names of the organelles and their functions. OK, so let's uh, move on uh, to part B. Um, this type of question um, I've seen come up a few times over the last four years or so. Um, it's asking you now about the structures labelled A. Um, so if we scroll up, uh, there's structure A, which we now know, of course, is the uh, the mitochondria. OK, and there's actually uh, an arrow there going to two uh, organelles and they're both labelled A, but they actually look uh, slightly different. And um, the examiner's, examiner's asking you to explain why they differ in appearance in the diagram. OK, so they're identical organelles. They're both mitochondria. That's a mitochondrion and that's a mitochondrion. But why do they look different? Um, so I've seen this ask a few times uh, over the years. So I want to try and explain why organelle A looks different. OK, so I need to draw out uh, a couple of diagrams here. Um, what you've got to remember is when you look at um, a cell, under a microscope, whether it's an electron microscope or whether it's a light microscope, what you're looking at is a two dimensional um, image of a three dimensional structure. Remember that cells are three dimensional. OK, they have to be because all organisms are three dimensional. That means the cells are three dimensional. So um, that causes some some sort of identification issues when you look at organelles under the microscope. OK, um, so if I if I just draw a, a basic sausage shaped mitochondrion there. OK, uh, imagine that this white background you're looking at is inside a cell. OK, that's a mitochondria there and it's lying horizontal. Yeah, but Another organelle could be lying perhaps at a slight angle like that. Or the organelle could be completely vertical. OK, uh, organelles do not align or sit or arrange themselves in the same direction in a cell. They point in all sorts of directions. OK, so if I uh, clear that away, if we just have one mitochondrion uh, situated in a horizontal position and a mitochondrion now in a vertical position, OK, so that's the, the orientation of those organelles uh, in the cell. Whenever you uh, 
look at a cell under a microscope you have to take thin slices through the cell so if this red line represents slicing through the cell we've sliced through the organelles okay and because the organelles are arranged differently they will look differently under the microscope okay so what we say is that the organelles lie in different planes we have a horizontal plane and we have here a vertical plane so when you slice through as shown by the red line what you get are these types of images so if I draw the horizontal uh, horizontal one now in green you get an elongated structure and inside that I'll try my best to draw it out but these are the uh, folded in a membrane of the mitochondria known as the Christie okay so that's what a mitochondrion looks like when it's lying in the horizontal plane okay and in purple then if I draw what the vertical structure would look like it would look like a circle but again inside it you would also have your highly folded in a membrane or Christi okay so I, I hope that's helped uh, understand what's going on with the different uh, shapes of the mitochondria organelle it's all to do with how they are lying within the three-dimensional structure of the cell okay they lie in different planes within the cell okay right if we go back to uh, question number four then okay and hopefully now you can see that this uh, shape of the organelle is spherical and that's because it's lying in a vertical plane and the other organelle now is an elongated one uh, which shows it's lying in a horizontal plane uh, within the cell okay right so uh, let's type that answer in for part B okay there we go uh, so I've said the mitochondria are cut in different uh, planes okay that's quite an important term because one mitochondria is in the horizontal plane while the other is in the vertical plane okay right let's go on to part C uh, state two ways in which an animal cell would differ from uh, a plant cell okay um, I think this question is is pretty straightforward it's one of those questions that's just asking you to regurgitate uh, a couple of facts okay you need as I said in previous videos you just need to be able to retain these types of uh, uh, bits of information uh, because two marks here um, again a lot of marks um, in an A-level exam and you really shouldn't be dropping two marks for this type of uh, question um, so the differences between a plant and an animal cell well a plant cell has a chloroplast uh, animal cells uh, don't okay now this question uh, requires a direct comparison of the ways in which they are different all right so I'll just type that first answer in for you there's the uh, there's the answer and as you can see I've made a direct uh, comparison animal cells do not have chloroplasts but plant cells do have chloroplasts okay if you had just said animal cells do not have chloroplasts you wouldn't have got the mark because you haven't then included um, that plant cells do have chloroplasts okay um, right um, another uh, difference between a plant and animal cell is um, that the plant cells have uh, organelles called plasmodesmata but animal cells do not have those organelles okay there we go so that's the uh, the second um, differences between a plant uh, and an animal cell uh, we could have put in, of course, that uh, plant cells have a cell wall. Animal cells don't have a cell wall. Okay. Um, 
plant cells have a large uh, permanent vacuole, uh, but animal cells don't. Okay, so there's quite a few uh, differences there between plants uh, and animal cells. Okay, so that's the end uh, of question four. If we just um, have a quick look at the mark scheme then, uh, there's the table uh, for six marks. Okay, straightforward enough. Part B, they've been cut in different planes. And part C there, um, you have the different uh, features of the animal and plant cells. Okay, now the examiner has stated in the mark scheme here, no need for comparative statements, okay, but um, as you've seen in uh, in a previous video, um, the examiner did want comparative statements, so I just think it's good practice um, to make a comparative statement because you don't know that the examiner doesn't want comparative statements, okay, um, so I think it's just uh, good practice to uh, put those put those in. Okay, I hope you found that of use.